Hi, have you ever wondered what is this precious device that is hidden inside most of electrical systems and automation processes? Today, we will dive deeply into electrical relays and understand exactly how it works and how we can use it in our course. My name is Ahmed Mustafa and I work as a senior maintenance electrical engineer at one of the leading oil and gas companies here in Egypt. Consider subscribing in Electrical Engineering Planet channel to support our community. Also, don't forget to share, like, and let knowledge enlighten your world. An electrical relay is a switch that connects two points to each other. Inside the relay, we have a coil. This coil, when it's energized by energy, it will generate an electromagnetic field that will attract this switch to be closed. Okay, let's say that this coil is 24 volt DC. It has a rated voltage of 24 volt DC. So when we apply 24 volt DC to this coil it will generate an electromagnetic field and will let this contact to be closed let's create a simple circuit to understand exactly what is happening let's say that we have a battery this battery of 24 volt dc and a small switch this is the first circuit the second circuit here will be an ac source of 220 volt AC and a lamp. This lamp will not be illuminated because this switch is open. Now, as you can see, this is our relay from inside. Now, if this small switch closed, then this circuit will be closed and the current will energize our coil the coil will create an electromagnetic field that will attract our switch to be closed now this circuit will be closed and the ac source will supply the lamp and the lamp will illuminate very good now let's open this switch again and the circuit will not be having any energy so the coil will stop supporting this switch so the switch will be open again so this lamp will not be illuminated anymore very good so now we have two circuits low power circuit and a high power circuit this circuit needs just a small amount of power to let this coil energized so it's a low power circuit but here we have our high energy our high power circuit because it needs more energy to let this lamp illuminate or if we have a motor to make it rotate so we need high energy so this source has a high power so as we can see, we have two circuits, low power and high power circuits. Inside our relay, we have the coil and the contact. This contact is normally open contact, which means that it's open in its primary status. When it, this coil energized, this contact will be closed. There is other different contacts. It could be a normally closed contact like this one normally closed so here when the coil is energized this contact will be open and we can use it in other applications now we have different types of contacts this contact for example is called single pole single through switch which means that it has a single input and a single output we could have a different types of this contact. It could have a single pole double throw switch, which have one input and 
two outputs. This is a common pin and this is the normally closed pin and this is the normally open pin. So this is a single pole double through switch. When the coil is energized, it will move from here to this contact. Okay. Also, we could have different types. Double pole, double through switch. Which means that have a double input and double output. Here, for example, it's the first input with two output. The second input with two output. So double pull double through okay here is an electrical relay with four separate contacts every contact have a single pole double through switch this is just like our example relay here when this coil energized those switches will move to the other contact so let's create a simple example here if we have lamp number one and here we have lamp number two let's say here we have motor one and here we have motor two let's say that we have here heater one and here we have heater two here we have motor three and here we have motor 4. Let's bring an AC source now. This is our AC source. Connect it with the motors and the loads. And the other input here, the input of every contact will be connected to the line of our source. So as you can see here, this is the low power circuit and this is the high power circuit. Here, let's say that we will close this small switch. Let's close it. And the current will flow through this coil now this coil will create an electromagnetic field this electromagnetic field will attract all these to be change its positions so now after the new position the current will flow through l2 m2 h2 and m4 so l2 is working m2 h2 m4 but any L1, M1, H1, M3 is not working. Let's say that we will close the switch again. Or we will open it again. I'm sorry. So now we have opened the circuit. So no current will flow. So the electromagnetic field will stop supporting our contacts. So it will return to the normal position. Now which loads are working the loads of L1, M1, H1, and M2. This is the contacts who are working now. Let's take a closer look at our electromagnetic relay with a coil of 24 rated voltage DC, 24 volt DC, and four contacts separate or different contacts with a common pin and normally closed pin and normally open pin here we have 14 pins as you can see here every pin has a number so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 14 13 and 14 is the coil pins which energize the coil here one five and nine is a separate contact also we have two six and ten is separate contact three 
and 7 and 11 is a separate contact. 8 and 4, 8, 12 is a separate contact. Here, for example, we have 1, 5, and 9. 9 is the common pen. 1 is the normally closed pen. 5 is the normally open pen. So when we energize 13 and 14, this will move to have 9 and 5 are connected to each others. Let's bring now an avometer and create a continuity test. Here, let's choose any of the contacts. I will choose these contacts connected to the common pin and the other rod will be connected to the normally closed pin. And as we can see here, this pin, the common pin, is connected to the normally closed pin. And this pin is normally open pin, which is logic. Now, this common pin is not connected to normally open pin. But when we energize A1 and A2, which is 13 and 14, this common pin will be connected to this normally open pin. In the next few videos, we will understand exactly what is a contactor, also what is a timer, what is the difference between a breaker and a contactor, a contactor and a relay, an overload and a contactor, and so on. And we will understand every single component that we will use in our course. After that, we will get dive deeply into our course to create First, a simple circuits like direct online circuit, star delta circuit, and a reverse uh, direction circuit. Then we will have more advanced circuits. Like if we have uh, three motors uh, with a timing, different timing, and we want to control it. We have more than this. Also, we could have more advanced circuits. Like if we have three motors and every single motor, we want to control it, star delta, then we want to reverse it and make it uh, in the right direction. Also, we will dive deeply into more advanced circuits inside the processes. Like if we have uh, two convoyers and two pumps, three air coolers and a lot of sensors and we want to make this sequence of controlling, we will create all these circuits. And you can ask me of any circuit in the future you want to create and we will create together. Consider subscribing in Electrical Engineering Planet channel to support our community. Also, don't forget to share, like, and let knowledge enlighten your world. Thanks for watching.